In a previous video, we saw how to solve single layer conductive heat transfer problems. But what happens when you have more than one layer of material in the wall? Those layers may have a different thermal conductivity, and that means heat will pass through them at a different rate. So you have to account for all of those layers in your wall when you are solving multi-layer conductive heat transfer problems. Let's take a look at an example problem. This problem probably looks familiar because it's very similar to the problem we saw in the original conductive heat transfer video. We're still looking at our metal shed in a field, but this time we see that there's a layer of insulation on the inside of the wall. So now we have two layers on our wall. We have the metal layer that we originally had, and now we have the new layer of insulation. Let's get started by drawing our diagram. All right, here we have our shed. A closer look at the wall itself. There's a metal layer, and there's an insulation layer, and we have heat coming through from the outside to the inside. So we have an outside temperature, and we have an inside temperature. All right, now that we have our diagram, let's get started writing our equation. This is going to look very much like the equation that we had for the single layer, except for this time we've got two layers in our wall, so we have to account for both layers. And this is how we do it. This equation looks pretty similar to what we've seen before. We still have our area term, we still have our temperature difference between the outside and the inside temperature. But down here in the denominator, we are differentiating between the metal layer of the wall and the insulation layer of the wall. So let's label those. We can't use an average thermal conductivity. We have to separate out the thickness of the wall and its particular thermal conductivity. That's just how this equation works. You cannot average the thermal conductivities and use the full thickness of the entire wall it just doesn't work that way, unfortunately. So we have to split up our delta x's and our k's for each section of the wall just like this. If we had another layer on the wall, we just add another term to the denominator. and We'd say plus delta x3 over k3. If we had a fourth layer, we'd add in a fourth term and so on for however many layers of wall we have. This time we have two. So we need just two terms in our denominator. The problem asks us to solve for Ti, so let's rearrange our equation so that we're solving for Ti. This will take a couple of steps. First, what we need to do is move the denominator where Ti is on that side over to the Q side. Now that we've done that, we can move that minus A over to the Q side. Remember, we're trying to get Ti by itself. If you're wondering why the negative sign is in front of the Q, it's because it came over with the A and I just decided to put it in the numerator instead of here in the denominator next to the A. It doesn't matter where you put it as long as it ends up on the Q side. The last step to get Ti by itself is to subtract T0. When you do this, you're going to end up with minus Ti equals minus that Q term minus T0. And since we have all those minus signs, let's just multiply by another minus sign to get rid of them all. That will turn everything positive. Yes, you are allowed to do this by algebraic rules. And there we go. Ti, it's by itself. We do have all the numbers we need to solve this problem. So let's plug everything in and see what we get. When we crunch through all these numbers, we find that the inside temperature of this shed is quite a bit lower than the last time. So last time it was 27.1 Celsius with just the metal. At the same rate of heat transfer, if we've got that layer of insulation on there, meaning that heat transfer is slowed down considerably through that insulation, we have a temperature of minus 0.1 Celsius. So obviously somebody has stuck a very good air conditioner into that shed. This just goes to show you what insulation can do. We have the same rate of heat transfer, the same Q as before, 
But since we have that layer of insulation there that's really resisting heat transfer, that means the temperature of the shed inside has to be really, really cold to get that high a rate of heat transfer through the wall. If you're wondering about the area term in the denominator right here, this is the width and length of the walls, and then you have to multiply by four because there's four walls. That's how we got the area for this. So there you have it. That is multi-layer conductive heat transfer. Again, this equation can be used for as many layers as you want. You just keep adding terms in the denominator until you get to the number of walls that you have.